Uh, my name is Abby Pearson, and I am a junior from Scott Catholic. I like your work! Good job! And this piece is titled, I Know What the Caged Bird Feels. I was taught about the perfect waist-to-hip ratio by the internet. I gathered how women are a ballet construction site, crafted in pretty colors, molded by rough, unkempt hands. We are buildings in which the only rulers are measuring tapes, and I knew this. I knew this because in fourth grade, I was taught that I was pulled from Adam's rib. I was molded for a purpose, but I could never be as outspoken as him, never as boisterous, knew there were more places for leaves to hide, but never enough to escape <laughs> blame for my body. I was wearing bras when I was 10, and I was made to stand still as a boy as large as I was, twisted the fabric between his fingers and snapped it. I didn't say a word. I started chewing my nails that year. The next, I started chewing my hair. When I lost the weight, it was almost as if I had always been rejecting milkshakes, as if I had always been crossing my legs and watching to see if they expanded too much. I fell in love with myself because now I was undeniably woman. I was allowed to. And suddenly, this beauty I had worked for was something vicious. No longer did boys snap at my bra, but undress me with their eyes. I was something to behold, to be held. I went from a size 16 to a size 6, because I was told I was no longer worth consuming unless I shrunk myself. I was not given the option of not being consumed in the first place. So when the boy tells me he loves me and asks me to move to the back seat, I allow it, because I have all always been taught that I am meant to be devoured or taped up or put together by anything other than myself. So I do not say I do not want it. I do not say anything. The truth is I am not disposable. Not always hourglass shaped, twisted into defined stomachs and calorie calculators. I am not always going to sit still and cross my legs for the man sitting in front of me while being expected to open them for another. There are mornings where I am told to shut up by the boy sitting next to me because my laugh is just too grating on his ears. And there are evenings where I can't walk around my own neighborhood without hearing a smile, sweetheart, and a wolf whistle. Why should I be taught to contain my joy for only the moments that are deemed pretty enough? Why should I be taught to contain the blemished parts of me because they are considered too messy to be seen as if the cracks in the foundation are not human too I was never something to be worked on never a construction site a blueprint a doll here I am raggedy unrefined beaten down and still worthy of love whether I am considered an effective woman or not and sometimes I think back to myself nine years old obese a boy reaches for my back and I flinch. There, I think of the measuring tape in my bottom drawer. I think of the sharpness I was never told I had. And I leave. Oh.